what I like to do is what we're going to show you here today is we're going to just lay down on just a few pieces of cheap tile along the back here so what we typically do is like this right here we went to Home Depot and just grabbed some really cheap 69 cent per square foot ceramic tile the cheapest we could find was on the closeout bin and you can see here the idea is we'll, we'll do a row of these tiles going across the back there and the idea is to make the top surface of these tiles to match the top surface of the existing tile. Hey everybody, Jeff here, and welcome back to our channel. If this is your first time visiting us, this is a great time for you to take a look at the, the subscription button down below and you want to click on that so you can be aware of all of the other videos that we put out to help you. So this is all for you, my friends. And at the same time, when you subscribe, make sure you click on that bell icon right next to it that will appear when you subscribe because it doesn't make any sense if you subscribe without being alerted to every time we put up a new video. Okay? And then if you have any questions at all, leave them down in the comments and we'll answer them for you. So let's get started with today's project. Okay, so here is the kitchen where we are going to install our base cabinets. And there's going to be a row of base cabinets here and a sink and dishwasher over here. So the sink will also have a like a vanity type cabinet. The problem that you run into when you're dealing with this from time to time is you'll see that there's many layers of flooring that have been put on this place over time. So you have concrete back there, you have linoleum right here, and then you have tile that was added later. And so the problem is, is you're going to come in and put these base cabinets down and they're going to sit on top of the cement on the, these tiles. And um, if you look right here, our base cabinets are going to be 24 inches. So 24 inches takes you just about in front of the front edge of this blue tape. So you can see it's not a problem for the front at all. The, the base cabinets are going to sit on top of the tile, and that's fine. The problem is at the back now, because now at the back they're going to want to go down like this. So there's either two ways to do this. You can spend all day shimming your cabinets individually. Now I'm going to show you something right here. Here's the existing tile. So you can see there's a gap under my level there, see? So you have to sort of with a thin set just manage it so that you can mash the tile down into the thin set but leave this side up a little higher to match this edge because the cement floor is slightly slanted when you go all the way to the back you can see we are pretty close to level see that so we're we're pretty close to matching this thing but i like to get it exact so that you don't even see any the bubble touching the line. The bubble really needs to move over a little bit more. It's got to come up more on this end like this, see? So, that's what we have to do is we'll just mix up a batch of thin set, quickly throw these down, and you don't have to grout, you don't have to do anything with them. Now, the only issue is over here where the stove is going to go, we will have to probably grout a little bit. And I'll tell you why. See, the stove runs from this line right here all the way over to this white line here. And so when you put a stove in, you know, you want to have a completely smooth floor that's covered all over, right? So we're going to have tiles in the back, and we'll have a grout line and another row of tiles here that are going to be perfectly cut to mate up to all of this. Now what we're going to do here, we'll probably just take our angle grinder and slice right along that blue line on the other side of the blue tape there just right along that line to make it straight and then we'll cut the other tile pieces to fit right up against them and we'll throw some grout in there too just to make sure that all of the, the, the spaced tiles uh, are covered so that it'll be just like a regular grouted floor here so that when you come in with a stove you'll be able to slide it in and then with the stoves we like to use um, these, these kinds of pads we put these under the legs of the stove under each of the four feet. So it's rubber on this side to hold the uh, the stove on there firmly and then it's like a felt on this side. And so the felt just glides aimlessly across the the tile pretty good. 
So that's our strategy here is to just put, for the most part, for base cabinets, you want to put a row of tiles that go all the way across the back. And same with this side. And you want those tiles to be perfectly level with the tiles at the front. So that when you put your base cabinets in, they won't be rocking back and forth or side to side or anything. You just want perfectly level cabinets because we cannot stress the importance enough of having perfectly level base cabinets if you're going to put granite on top. You can't be off by even a sixteenth of an inch or the granite can crack. So if you have two cabinets, one here and one here, and, one, and there's lippage between the top of them and this one's a little bit higher, man, you're going to have probably a cracked granite before long. So that's what we have to do here before we put in these base cabinets. It's a very quick operation. should be done in less than a half hour. Okay, so when we're dealing with linoleum here, we usually just take a little butter knife there and slide it under it, and they, they typically come up pretty easily. So we do have to get all of this linoleum up to get everything ready to cut cleanly across these tiles here for the stove. All right, so now you can see we have like four pieces laid out here. Just a dry fit, just to kind of see what it's going to look like and how many pieces it'll take. So we'll have to make a little cut there. And whatever pieces we're going to put here along the, the oven here is going to be probably just three pieces, three slivers. And we're not going to bother putting anything here. There's no reason to because the back of the cabinet will sit there. The front of the cabinet will sit here in front of this blue line and everything will be level. So we don't need anything uh, down the side. It'll all be held in place there. And that's the way it's going to be. All right, so I have my thin set mortar is all troweled out now. And one thing I wanted to point out to you to make sure you notice, you see how I have all of my lines are nice and parallel and straight? There's a reason for that. And it cracks me up every time I watch these flipping shows and I see these clowns on their tiling floors, all of these uh, professional um, tile installers, these contractors that these people hire. And you see them on the floor and they're troweling out the stuff and they go in a in a semicircle like this, they comb it in a circle. That's not right because that won't allow the the air to escape out of out of these. You need to have straight lines so that when you put the tile down on it and mash it down, the air gets forced out that end and out this end. But when those guys do it like they do, they're like dead end mazes. Every time they go in around in a circle, and they're their mortar will never collapse down and that's how you end up with tiles that either pop up later or they have hollow spots under them because they didn't make proper coverage because the cement the, the mortar mix did not go down properly this is how you're supposed to trowel okay so we've already started laying some of the tiles across here and so the important thing that you're trying to do here is you want to get this bubble in the middle here Get out of the way here uh, from light. So, because it's the back end of that tile has to be at the same level as this front floor tile right here. Okay, because that's where the back of the cabinet is going to rest. So, you want to make sure that's level there. And then you also want to make sure from tile to tile that it's smack dab no gaps or anything and see how that, that just lands right on top of them perfectly flat and we're nice and level side to side of course and um, it's the most important right here in this area where the, the stove is going to go because you want a nice level floor to slide the stove across on and we just have this one end piece to put in here and there's that last piece in and he's looking pretty level there. So these pieces right here all went in in not even 10 minutes time. And here's the other side completed. And likewise, these came out nice, very level.
front to back. So we'll let these dry overnight and then we'll come in tomorrow and we'll set our base cabinets and hopefully they'll be nice and level and not wobbling. But this is how you do it, folks. This is how you even out your floor so that you can put your cabinets down and everything will be nice and level. Well, here we are the next morning. And as you can see, our cabinets have arrived. It's always a good day in any remodel when your cabinets finally arrive. It's such a major milestone moment. So we have the cabinet here and you can see we've in, just dry fitted it in place. And you can see there it is resting on the back part of the tiles that we laid last night. And the front part of it is resting down here on the, these existing tiles that were put here by the builder. The only problem that I don't like here is, you know, these cabinets, the, the bottom of them, the footing is only 21 inches off the wall. And, you know, the I don't know what was going through this builder's mind when they tiled this, but I think they stopped tiling here, which was stupid and figured, okay, people will just put a stove in there. But that's just really dumb because I always like to have a fully tiled surface in there to put stoves in and out. Because how are you going to get it to come out and up over that lip? It's just a lot more work for people. So we're going to have to come up with a way to fill in these gaps here. I think we might have uh, um, some spares of these that we can cut up and just uh, fit them there and and get them in place. A little bit extra work, but that's the way it goes sometimes. But anyway, you can see here that uh, we're nice and level front and back. And then of course, side to side. We're right smack dab on and that's why you go through this little bit of extra work it just makes things a lot easier when you can take all your base cabinets and slide them in and since these tiles are all level side to side and there's no lippage um there's not going to be another cabinet here but if there was another cabinet here they would both be at the exact same height which which would be perfect for your granite because then you're not going to have to start playing games with shimming and here you can see we have a nice finished grouted floor underneath where the stove is going to go. And this, as you can tell, looks a lot better than it looked before. As you can tell from the before and after shots here. So now we have a nice smooth surface to push our stove back into. And that, folks... And this, folks, is how you level your kitchen floor before putting the cabinets on. In your quest to figure out what the heck do we do with that space behind and underneath the cabinets in our kitchen when we do a remodeling. So uh, if you like this video, this would be a good time for you to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button down below. And also make sure you hit the bell icon. That will alert you anytime we issue a new video. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up down below. Click on the thumbs up icon. And that's it for this week. We will see you next week. Bye.